Hey guys, what's going on? This is a follow-up video to a video that I made the other day. Anyway, today I'm going to be again discussing how to get the most out of OBS Studio. As I mentioned, I mostly use OBS to stream, as it is for me the easiest and most effective way at producing a quality stream. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be sharing with you some of the settings that I use whenever I stream, especially if you are just starting out like me. To preface this, obviously not everyone is going to be able to have a system and internet that's capable of streaming. Essentially, you do need a pretty strong PC to be able to handle the game you're playing as well as OBS streaming in the background at the same time. You also do want to have good internet, and by good I mean above 4 megabit, megabits per second for a 70 p, or 720p 30fps stream, which is the standard for new starting out streamers. And something else that might be a little bit of a prerequisite is also a second monitor. If you don't have a second monitor, streaming can be a little bit difficult. You actually, you actually want to be able to monitor the OBS window that you have open on your other monitor so you can make sure that you're not dropping frames or things are being overused or stuff like that. Basically, you want to be able to see what your viewers can see. So if you have a second monitor, that makes it a lot easier. Obviously, if you don't have a second monitor, you can still make do. Maybe you have a laptop or something like that, or you can get a get your phone out and see, see it through it that way. All right, so to get us started looking at this window here, this can look quite confronting to someone who's only used the older versions of OBS or for new users entirely. I'll explain what we've got going on here. Basically, this scenes tab is your collection of scenes and a scene is essentially a grouping of sources, which is the next tab over. A source is basically anything that you want to appear on the screen, whether that be gameplay, face cams, borders of your face cam, basically anything that you want. You can add pretty much anything you want in here by right clicking and going add and you've got a whole bunch of different sources that you can add in. So some of the important ones that we can go through are window capture, video capture device, uh, media source, game capture, display capture, browser source. Browser source is an important one, but we can talk about that in another video. These are mostly pretty self-explanatory and are very actually, actually they're very easy to use. But we will get back to these a little bit later on once we want to set up our stream settings. Right, so diving into our settings menu, and again, some of these settings and names can look and sound a little bit confusing or confronting when you first use them. So if you use them for the first time, some of these settings can seem a little bit daunting, but I'll tell you all the important things that you need to look at and you can mess around with some of the settings and other stuff for yourself if you are interested in that. So there isn't really anything that you need to worry about from the general tab. The only thing would be changing the theme, which you can change from default to dark to rachne. So basically that's up to you, whatever you want the stream to look like. Okay, so in the stream tab, this is where you can basically tell your OBS where you're going to be streaming to. And in this case, we're going to be streaming to Twitch. Essentially, you want to have the streaming services tab selected rather than a custom streaming server. And then you want to have your service be the service you've got choice. This is pretty much anything you want. It's basically a whole bunch of different options. And if you, for example, that option you're trying to stream towards isn't there, you can use the custom streaming service. But we're going to be streaming to Twitch, so... We'll pick Twitch, show all services. You can do that if you want to see all the services. So basically, if we get rid of that, you see more services. And the server is the one that you think would be closest to you. So you have a whole list of different services or servers rather. This basically changes depending on the service you're trying to use. So in our case, we're going to go with Australia, Sydney. And your stream key is basically your personal stream ID. Basically, I'm not going to discuss how to get your stream key because I only know how to get it for Twitch. So it might be a little bit different for every single streaming service you're trying to use. So don't stress too much about it. If you do need to know how to get your stream key, just look it up. I'm, I'm sure you'll be able to find it somewhere. It definitely is on the Twitch page. It does tell you how to do it. Anyway, do not give anyone your stream key. So like with many things with OBS, the output tab is our best friend, our bread and butter for making quality streams. So you change the output mode to advanced so you get a better view of what's actually going on. And then you can start adjusting some, fine tuning some settings from here. So yeah, basically we can start adjusting our settings in the streaming tab now. You can set up the number of audio tracks you want. This will be useful if you plan on editing your streams later or if you have multiple audio sources. I choose to use one and that's basically what works for me. So I stick with one. You can stick with two, three, whatever you want to have going on. But just, just to start out, you just want one. We want our encoder to be x264. For this, you want to have a pretty strong CPU. And if this isn't the case, you can also use the NVENC encoder, which is the NVENC H.264. This basically uses your graphics card to do the encoding, but the quality might not be as high. So do, if you want to use the NVENC encoder, make sure you do some tests on your own to work out what's actually best for you. We can ignore rescale output and move down to rate control. For this, I want to use constant bitrate, so that's CBR. There's also variable bitrate. 
I'm not sure what the other two are, something bitrate. Yeah, but yeah. For my streams, I always use constant bitrate. That's just basically what works for me. Now, your streaming bitrate is very dependent on your internet. A good place to start is above 1800, but below 4000 from what I've read. To work out your ideal bitrate, you wanna do an internet speed test. I will keep this simple. Whatever upload speed your result gives, you find 80% of that number and then times it by 1000. So if, for example, you have three megabit per second upload speed, 80% of that's 2.4, times that by 1,000 is 2,400. So you would make your bitrate 2,400. Obviously, if you have fast internet, you can, you can basically ignore this and your number will be much, much higher. So if, for example, you have 40-ish upload speed or 40 megabit upload speed like I do, that would be 40,000 and Twitch doesn't accept a bitrate of above basically 4,000. So I stick in the middle of about 3,000. And you can ignore the rest of these settings from what I know. You can basically skip to the recording tab and or skip the recording tab and audio tab as far as I know as well. Moving on to our audio tab, this is where you set up the devices that you want to stream with and what you want to hear, what your audios want to hear. So basically you can set up your desktop audio devices, just your headset that you're using and the mic or auxiliary, auxiliary audio device is your microphone. You can also set up multiple different audio devices if you so choose. The video tab is short, but also very important. This is where you set your video resolutions and FPS. Essentially, you want your base resolution to be the same as your monitor, in this case, a 1920 by 1080 monitor. Output resolution is what the video will be recorded down into. So if you, if like me, you're just starting out on Twitch, you're going to be wanting to reducing 720p 30 FPS streams. To do this, you want to change the output scaled resolution down to 720. It was on 1920 by 1080, but we want to do 720. So you pick that option, and you can adjust the FPS to whatever you seem appropriate. We're gonna go with 30 FPS just for a basic starting point. You can always up this to 60 FPS if you are so inclined. Downscale filter is actually relevant in this case as we are actually downscaling our stream. This is up to you really and the settings you wanna choose. If you have a base PC, you can actually set this to Lang source or by cubic. Basically it's the quality of the, the quality of the downscaling of the resolution. So if you want it to be like, sharp as possible, as realistic downscale as possible, you wanna set it on Lanxos, but this does use quite a large amount of your PC. You can set up various hotkeys in the hotkey tab, like start and stop streaming. You can also use this to change scenes or hide something you don't want people to see. This is actually very useful if you don't have the two monitors or you're just lazy like me. And there isn't an awful lot to do in the advanced tab either. I don't really know what most of these settings and options actually even mean. So after we've got our settings, you're probably asking, how do I set up our stream? Basically, you want to create a scene on the right, name it whatever you want, and then you want to add a source. So you want to right click the sources tab and add a source. Ones I'd recommend for using for gaming include game capture, window capture, monitor capture. Monitor capture is there. Display capture. Display capture is what it is. These are the ones I usually use and you can set up window capture to capture any open window. You can also set game capture to capture any full screen application that is open. It is pretty intelligent, so it'll usually pick the right thing that you want to have open at the time. And if you want to include a face cam, which you can do if you are interested, which is video capture device, you want to right click sources again and add video capture and then you can adjust the settings in there so you look nice and shiny in your stream. As you can see in this particular scene here, we do have two little widgets open, which are the followers and subs tab, which is basically the window that shows when someone follows and the viewers tab, which basically shows on screen how many people are actually watching currently, which is very helpful for me if I want to know how many people are actually watching if I don't have the Twitch window open. Basically, there are a number of other different little widgets that you can add to make your streams look pretty. I've got OBS set up to display new followers and the, for example, the viewers tab that I've got open at the moment. If you want me to explain how to set those up, make sure you do leave a like and comment and making, making sure that you let me know to make a video on that because that is using Streamlabs and that's actually a very, very cool service that I love to use. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about streaming with OBS Studio. It is pretty simple, but it does look a little bit intimidating at first. So hopefully I've cleared up any questions that you guys might have about streaming. Feel free to mess around with the settings that I've given you and it might give better results for your personal and individual systems. This is just what works for me. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this one. If you did enjoy it or I helped you out in any way, make sure you do leave a like and do subscribe if you are new around here. This has been Luke from Less Than Average Gaming and I hope you guys do have an above average day and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.